This is the Bionicle Inspiration Series, where we take a look at Moxima across the Bionicle community to inspire you. Today, we're going to be focusing on some revamps. So maybe there was a set you really liked and you thought, hey, I want to redo it in some fashion or I want to give it some unique spin. I want to make it better. I want to make it cooler. Whatever. We're going to be talking about that today with a variety of different revamps of some original Bionicle sets built by some fantastic builders. And you can always check the links in the description to see some of their other work as well. So let's dive into the very first mock it's by okay susu zero and this is toa hagar norik i always liked uh norik and uh iruni as well who were the sort of two uh sort of separate kind of metro uh style characters for the sort of like hordika-esque wave uh of bionicle and i don't know I, I remember i never actually got them as a kid i think i sort of since got them later uh but they always to me seemed like incredibly like elegant and the fact they were both like gold and silver as well seemed so like special i don't know there was something about those sets that really grabbed me as a kid so it's cool to see him revamped here and having more of that sort of like elegance like i feel like a lot of this revamp is really accenting some of those very kind of knight-like qualities of this character uh and making them look a little bit more i guess regal or i guess just sort of more like proud and a bit more um uh, just elegant. I don't know. There's something about this that just looks cooler, you know. Uh, some details that I think sort of do that well are the shoulder design here, uh, or at least most of the upper arm design there. Uh, we can see some um, Knight's Kingdom armor pieces being used there, and I think they're being used well. Uh, that sort of, uh, again, knight-like quality of that armor piece there seems very fitting uh, for this character, and actually I think works perfectly with the mask and some of the other pieces on here, so it's a good inclusion for sure. I also quite enjoy the torso design on this mock here because I think the dark red like tail pieces there that have been kind of nicely integrated into the torso it kind of looks like some sort of like fine art piece or something where you would see these kind of you know interesting ornate details or sort of like carving or something like that uh, there's something a bit more kind of like historic about it or, or, or like older or, or maybe like they're wearing armor that has this really intricate detailing all throughout it or something like that uh, so I, I think it's just a nice inclusion for sure I also like seeing these speed or pieces on the back here from some of the old uh, Lego Chima sets. Uh, I think they've been nicely integrated uh, kind of color scheme wise because the dark red sort of at the back there and then it kind of uh, has some silver over the top of it uh, to sort of mimic the rest of the kind of color blocking and color scheme of this mock. Uh, and it's just a clever little part use using those pieces there. I think it looks cool. So a lovely little Noric revamp here. On to the next one. This is Takadox uh, and this is by Explosive Tortuga. So I like this because I think it's a bit more of a sort of like slimmed down simplistic revamp of the original set. Just kind of removing some of the colors, stripping back some of the weapons, and just making this a bit more smoother, a bit more uh, refined, and hey, it works. You know, I think something that can be very fun and very fitting for a lot of um, Bionicle revamps can be to just kind of build it in your own style. It might be a bit of a departure from the original uh, set, it might actually be pretty close, whatever, it could just be a fun way of, you know, experimenting with different styles, trying out something new, uh, or just kind of better understanding how you build, I guess. Um, so, yeah, nothing wrong with a more sort of stripped back revamp in this case, because I think it works well. I think it looks nice. I always love seeing uh, tire pieces being used. Uh, on mocks because it's actually such a great piece to integrate into your CCBS stuff. You can see it here uh, sort of on the wrists there. Uh, it just sort of fills out some of the gaps on that Hero Factory piece there, the, the Hero Factory bone piece specifically. Uh, well, CCBS bone, they have many names uh, and it just looks nice, you know. Even seeing Takadox without the uh, like silver claws that most of the Baraki had on their faces there, it kind of works. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I mean, I like seeing those on Takadox specifically, but, you know, in this circumstance here, there's not going to be any silver. So it makes sense to take them off in that sense. But uh, yeah, look, a very simplistic, but a very fun and uh, I've said it already, but elegant looking mock. I like it a lot. This next one here is by Ivan Martinov, and this is Turaga Doom and Nivork. So, of course, a revamp of Turaga Doom and Nivork, which is a very fun set, especially the idea of a little Matoran riding on a big bird. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, let's focus on Turaga Doom first. This is a very different take on Turaga Doom. He certainly uh, uh, has changed them up a fair bit, but it, it works. It works really well. Uh, the mask choice here, I think, is interesting because I don't know how he got a red Vakama mask. Normally, it's dark red. Uh, maybe it's a resin cast. Maybe it's you know a 3D printed thing or something crazy. Or he's got some weird rare prototype. I don't know. 
but it works. And it's cool to see it sort of flipped upside down like this and then a sort of rubber band or a sticker or something uh, over the top there to kind of form a weird looking eye design. Really like that. It's a bit different, but it works. Uh, and then the, the, the mouth. I really, really like that. So this piece is a, a bit more of an obscure piece, I guess. Uh, it came in some of the Ninjago movie sets, uh, and it was this sort of like shark-themed helmet for, I believe his name was General Number no. One. Uh, very creative name, but uh, still, uh, you know, a, a cool-looking minifigure with an interesting headpiece, and uh, sort of turning it upside down and integrating into this design here works perfectly. Uh, so, you know, I, I, th I think that's something that a lot of people play with with Bionicle, uh, especially if you, you look through past episodes of BIS, you can see people playing with different pieces to make uh, different like tooth and mouth designs, you know, using gears to form a mouth or playing with some of the Chima Ultra Build sets and using some of the head pieces in those to form the bottom of a jaw or the top of a jaw or whatever. Uh, so it's interesting to kind of play around with some minifigure head pieces and stuff and using that to form a mouth design here for this mock. It's a really unique head design and it just works really well. I love it. I also love this staff here, the weird sort of almost like Art Nouveau like wisp at the top there uh, as this sort of like spike with the ball and stuff. That's cool. It's a really nice looking staff and it's not hugely um, complex, but it just works and it looks really, really cool. Uh, let's go to Nivok now. I adore this. I, I really like the, the take on the head design here with, um, I think that's like a sticker, but it looks like it's sort of like a non-official Lego sticker over the top of the eye. Uh, so a nice way of illustrating the eye there. It may not in inherently be legal because you've got to kind of cut up non-existing uh, stickers or maybe that's actually an official Lego sticker that's been cut up or something. So and that may not float your boat with your, your sort of style of building, but it gets the job done and it makes for a unique eye design. Uh, I also like just in general all of the head here, uh, the fact that he's got this quasi spike, uh, that sort of red spike down the middle is this sort of like mohawk of sorts. It looks really cool uh, and the tongue design here with one of those kind of like cow horn pieces in dark red there that works perfectly for a tongue uh, and just looks cool you know um other stuff on this that i like is the wings but i don't know what set these came on uh, i at first thought it was the firstborn um a ninjago red dragon here but i don't think they are i think that's a different piece i just don't know where they're from who knows? Uh, I mean, he's got a, a, a normal red, mutter red uh, Vakama mask here, so maybe these are some sort of custom thing as well, or they've been edited on the computer or something. I don't know, but hey, maybe someone can point that out, because I am curious. They have a, a very interesting texture to them that works quite well for this mock, so who knows? But uh, regardless, some of those Ninjago Dragon sets often come with some pretty cool like plastic or cloth pieces for the wings. Uh, it's definitely a good idea to take a look at those or invest in one of those sets or even just those pieces on Bricklink uh, and use them for your Bionicle wing designs because they are perfect for it. They're designed to look exactly like that. So it's something to something to take a look at if you're interested in doing something similar. Uh, I love on these wings too that there is this sort of like spring piston piece. Uh, just such a unique texture to it. And uh, yeah, it just works really well there on those wings. Um, playing around with some of those weird technique pieces that uh, have springs on them or weird pistons or some of those almost like... Um, play feature sort of focused pieces uh, can uh, can certainly make for some nice part usages there and have some just unique textures to them and stuff like that. Really, really cool. Uh, so a fantastic, very different take on the original set here that just works so well. Very well done. On to the next one, the last one. This is by Dylan Meaves, and this is a revamp of Umarak the Hunter. Now, Umarak the Hunter, I think, was actually a very good set, to be clear. I love how he looks. I think it's actually one of the better... Um, Bionicle G2 sets that they made and one of the cooler characters but it's amazing how Dylan has somehow improved upon that tenfold and made it even cooler. Uh, so this is inspired by a lesson from The Witcher 3 uh, and that I think was some very clever source material there because you know Umarak of course has those horns he's um, got actually a surprisingly similar color scheme it just seems like a perfect kind of combination there that uh, works very well. So uh, a great idea to be inspired by a specific thing and then apply that to a pre-existing character. I think that's also a really fun way that you could approach a revamp for a Bionicle character, you know, if that's something that you're considering doing. Uh, so let's dive into this mock here. I love how much cloth is being used on this. Uh, we've got some of these uh, sort of like... Ooh, what color is that? Like, that's not quite even dark orange. I don't know. It's sort of sort of a brown. I don't know. It's a weird color choice. I don't know what that is, but I believe those come from various... Um, Oh, I was going to say some various Ewok sets of some of the, like, Ewok gliders from Star Wars, but I think they actually come from Jabba's Sail Barge, one of the earlier versions. I'm not really sure, actually, but hey, 
it's a cool piece. And again, pay attention to your your, your weird, obscure Lego sets like that. I just called Star Wars weird and obscure. I don't know if you heard of this movie. It's called A New Hope. Not many people have seen it. Uh, but um, it's still, cloth pieces appearing in sets outside of Bionicle or outside of uh, Ninjago, like I was saying before. Um they can still work very well for Bionicle. So whether it is from an Ewok set, whether it is from a Jabba's sail barge or something else that I'm not remembering right now, uh, it works very nicely here for some of the cloth details on this uh, this revamp here. So very, very cool. Uh, I, I, I think I own like five of those Ray Ultra Build sets because those cloth pieces are just so helpful. Um, so yeah, definitely a, definitely a piece that if, if, you, if, you, if you've got some money to spend and you're looking for some helpful pieces, Take a look at that Ray Ultra Build set and get some of those cool cloth pieces. They're very cool. Uh, I also like that this mock is uh, primarily that, um, uh, what is it, trans bright green. I even wrote it down because I know Mr. MC Lego Boy gets upset when I don't remember my translucent colors. And I don't want to upset my boy. He, he has done a lot for me. He's a nice guy. He's an admin on the Discord server and he does a good job. So it is trans bright green getting it right uh yeah i like that a lot of this mock is that color because to me it reminds me of like savage press from clone wars or something it's got this cool magic -y effect like this this guy doesn't even exist he's just held together with magic uh so it's cool that he's primarily that color with a lot of cloth over the top of it there really cool great use of translucent colors there uh i also like the staff as well using umarak's original mask there and putting some horns on it just looks creepy just looks cool as does the head design as well a really nicely built sort of like cow skull of sorts uh, or i guess it's more of like a like a reindeer skull or an antler thing antler thing that's the name of the creatures uh deer elk whatever you want to call it uh yeah just the the the, the more intricate design they're using a lot of like droid arms and different system pieces and robot arms and borok eyes and stuff like that uh, I think mimics the look of bones or of this sort of skull very well. So it's nice to see that sort of differentiation in textures there. Everything else is quite smooth, but that's a little bit more intricate in that sense, uh, which just seems appropriate there. So a brilliant choice and a brilliant shaping on that to achieve that look. It looks awesome. Uh, so a very different take on Umarak, but I think one that uh, still fits the character perfectly. So really well done there. Thank you very much for listening to this one. I survived having just woken up, and you might have noticed my voice was a little bit raw at the moment, but uh, hey, we got through. We did well. Uh, and sometimes people like the morning voice, Ben, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, links in the description to all the mocks that you saw in today's episode. There's also links to my own social media, so if you want to check out some of the stuff that I've got going on there, that's the place to do it. I have some exciting stuff that's going to be coming up there pretty soon, actually. I can't talk about it right now, uh, but it will be coming there soon, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and um, oh, there's also the submission email it's on your screen right now so if you've got mocks that you want to see on the show you can submit them to that and don't forget later this week uh well technically it won't be i think it'll probably be like tuesday or thursday uh next week i guess because technically it's already come out this week um will be abysmus christmas episode two so if you've got some stuff to submit for that don't forget to do so uh i imagine if you submit anything by the time of this episode it won't appear in the previous one because i'm probably going to record that tomorrow uh to then post later next week so you might not fit in with the my recording schedule in that sense but you might make it into the next episode of abysmus christmas so stay tuned thank you very much for watching happy building and bye for now